Before I begin this video, I just want to point this out. The reason why I'm redoing this list is because there's a certain character that I regret leaving out in the first place. And instead of making this a top 5, I'm going to make it a top 6 from now on. And because of this, I had to re-record some of my lines just to convert it into a top 6. So sorry for any inconvenience. I'm just a perfectionist, you know? So yeah. Anyways, let's get started. Hello everybody, Trevor here. You see my top 5 Steam Team members, then my top 6 non-rail vehicles, and now, get ready to watch my top 6 favorite narrow gauge engines. On the island of Sodor, there are 3 different gauges of track. The main one is standard gauge, while the other two are narrow gauge and minimum gauge. One of my favorite ones is the narrow gauge railway because it blends in with the beautiful scenery in season 4 and it's easier to use around mountain sides, including the Blue Mountain Quarry. I even like the Scarloi Railway theme that was used a lot in the Classic Era, because it sounds so charming and enthusiastic that it makes me want to visit the Durango and Silverton Narrow Gauge Railroad in Colorado. Man, I want to go there someday. Though, I did visit the Georgetown Loop Railroad back in 2007, but that's not important right now. Now for this list, I'm only going to include those that appear in the TV series, so that means no narrow gauge Stanley or any of the other mid solar engines. Oh, and I'm not going to include the ones that appear in the magazines either because most of the magazine stories are not entirely canon to the show. Although I would like to see them in the actual show, but they're too obscure and not as well known as the other engines in the franchise. Now with that out of the way, let's get chugging. Number 6. Smudger. Smudger is a cocky little dark green tank engine who worked on the mid Sora Railway along with Duke. He rode roughly and often came off the rails. Duke tried to warn him to be careful, but he didn't listen. And because of Smudger's antics, the manager decided to turn him into a generator where he was stationed behind the shed for god knows how long. I know I keep saying this a lot in my other videos, but the reason why he's so low on the list is because he only appeared in the Season 4 episode, Grandpuff, and later in Season 5, his face was reused for Bertram's. Also, his wooden railway model didn't get released until 2009 along with Proteus's. Heck, his Ertl model wasn't released either until 2001, which was the final year for Ertl Thomas in America. A piece of trivia that you may not know is that due to budget constraints, the production company had to reskin Reneas' model instead of making a brand new engine model. Oh, and if you remember in the original upload of my top 10 favorite Thomas villains video, I put Smudger on the number 6 spot by mistake because I thought he was a bad guy at first, but he's actually a mischief maker kind of like Bill and Ben. Yeah, you can see why I decided to replace him with the Horror Lorries as the number 6 spot on that list. Another interesting thing I like about Smudgers is his cackle by George Carlin. I thought it was really good. I've said this before, and I'll say it again. Smudger is not an American engine. Even though his Railway Series counterpart is, but they are not the same freaking character. Number 5. Duke. Duke is one of the oldest engines on the mid Sora Railway. He's the first narrow gauge tender engine in the franchise, with Bertram being second, and because nobody wanted him after the railway's closure, his driver and fireman decided to sheet him up and put him in his shed where he'll be safe. And as time went by, nature overtook the shed and closed railway, making it hard to find the sleeping duke. Thankfully, years later, a group of people made a plan to find Duke and bring him back to service. But their search ended by accident when one of the men broke through the roof of the shed due to his weight, and that's where they finally found him. The funny thing about this scene was that in the original Railway Series book, it was really the Reverend Teddy Boston, aka the Fat Clergyman, who broke through the hidden shed, but was replaced by this random person. 
I wonder why they did that. Oh, and the reason he's number five on this list is because he only appeared in season four. That is, if you discount the stock footage in season seven. Also, there are a lot of people, besides me of course, who really want Dude to come back in full CGI. But I'm afraid that's not going to happen anytime soon because of this crap! And if they do bring him back to the show, then I know a perfect voice actor for him. You know how Keith Wickham gave Scarlett and Glenn the same exact voice and accent? What if Rob Rackstraw gave Duke the same exact voice and accent as Bradford? Because think about it. Duke and Bradford are both wise and know a thing or two about the railway. Wouldn't that make sense? Number 4, Mighty Mac. When it comes to the new model era, my favorite of the new narrow gauge engines at that time was Mighty Mac, because of his unique design as well as his split personality. Mighty is the older of the two with a deep voice and flick of hair, while Mac is the younger of the two with a few freckles on his cheeks. They are technically two engines in one. Another thing I enjoyed about Mighty Mac is that they like to bicker and argue about who goes first and which way they need to go, like Cat Dog. And they also remind me of Devin and Cornwall from Quest for Camelot. Unfortunately, they haven't been seen since season 12 of the show, and I kind of wish they had full CGI counterparts just so they each have a voice actor of their own, like the other characters in the CGI series. Number 3, Luke. Luke is one of the newest narrow gauge engines in the CGI series along with Victor and Millie. But out of the three, my favorite of them all is Luke because he's such a cute and likable character. You also feel bad for him when it comes to being ashamed of a certain mistake, and I can relate because I've done some dumb and embarrassing things in the past, but I don't want to go into full detail on that right now. About Luke's mistake, he thought he pushed Victor into the sea, but later in the movie, it was revealed that Victor was alright and got a new coat of paint at the steamworks. Another interesting thing I like about Luke is that he speaks with an Irish accent, and I thought his voice actor Michael Legg did a perfect job with his voice. Luke is not only cute and likable, but he's also very caring and very friendly. For instance, in the episode Luke's New Friend, he made friends with a lost deer and wanted to keep him as a pet, but his friends wouldn't let him because the Blue Mountain Quarry is no place for a wild animal like a deer. So Luke decided to go to the park at Ulsted Castle where the deer finally found its mother. It was a sad goodbye, but Luke knows that it's for the greater good. One more interesting thing I could think of about Luke is that he's one of the only few narrow gauge engines that's very young, while most of the others are either middle aged or just old. We need more young engines like Luke on the Scarlowe Railway! And those are the reasons why Luke is number 3 on this list. Number 2 Rusty. When I was a little boy, my dad bought me that Rusty to the Rescue VHS, which showed this cover of Rusty. I thought he looked interesting when I first saw him because that funnel he has kind of looks like a steam engine funnel, but it's actually not. Rusty is actually a diesel engine who is the number 5 engine on the Scarlowe Railway. He came to that railway to help Sir Handel and Peter Sam with the extra work. That's one thing I like about Rusty, it's that he's helpful and friendly. For example, in Rusty Helps Peter Sam, aka Trucks in the UK, he helped pull Peter Sam out of the wreckage caused by the troublesome slate trucks. Another thing I like about him is that he's painted orange instead of black like in the Railway series. I think his orange paint suits him better because 1. It suits Rusty's name because it can also be a rusty color. And 2. Black is a dull color and it would make him look too similar to Devious Diesel in my opinion. The reason he's number two is because he's the only narrow gauge diesel to appear in the TV series. Sure, there is another one named Fred, but he's only mentioned in New Little Engine. And all we know is that he's based on Al from the Tyclin Railway and is assumed to be lazy like Dennis. Here's another fun fact. At one point, Hit Entertainment decided to make Rusty a girl in two episodes of season nine, but thankfully due to negative backlash, they reverted him back into a male, just as it should be, because I always prefer Rusty as a male, and I always like to stay true to a character's original gender, whether it be in the books or in the show. Before I get to my number one pick, 
Here are some honorable mentions. Scar Loey and Reneas. The reason they didn't make it is because in the new model era by Hit Entertainment, they were completely out of character by acting like young engines instead of old. Which begs the question, why couldn't they just make new characters that are young and silly instead of dumbing down the first two Scar Loey engines? Peter, Sam, and Sir Handel. They would have been numbers one and two, but didn't make it. Bertram. He got beaten out by Duke and Smudger. And besides, he's just a repaint of Duke's body with Smudger's face. Also, he was going to be a tank engine in the show, but because of budget cuts, they had to repaint Duke's model. Well, if that's the case, why couldn't they just repaint Sir Handel's model instead? Well, at least Duke's not the only narrow gauge tender engine anymore. And the number one most favorite narrow gauge engine of all time is... Duncan. Out of all the Scarlowe Railway engines in the franchise, Duncan is actually my most favorite of them all. Why? Because of many reasons. 1. I love his Scottish accent. It suits him perfectly, and my top three voices for him are George Carlin, Michael Brandon, and Tom Stewarton, if that's how he pronounce his last name. I don't care which one of them is better than the other, they're all good. Second of all, I also like his golden yellow paint, which in my opinion looks better than his traditional Scarloy Railway red paint from the Railway series. Yeah, you can see why Brett Allcroft decided to give each of the engines a different color instead of all to be red. And thirdly, I even like his grumpy personality. He's about as grumpy as Sir Handel when it comes to extra work, and sometimes I get a little grumpy when I have to do extra work too. In addition, I'm very thankful that Andrew Brenner brought him back in Season 18 with a new voice actor and CGI face, which looks better than his Season 12 counterpart in my opinion. When it comes to Duncan episodes, some of my favorites include Rock and Roll, Passengers and Polish, Duncan in the Old Mine, Duncan in the Hot Air Balloon, Duncan in the Grumpy Passenger, and of course, Duncan the Humbug. He seems like a very popular character not only in the Classic Era, but also in the Hit Entertainment seasons such as the New Model Era. I don't think that's a bad thing because I think he's a cool character. I also don't mind if he's not always grumpy, even in seasons 9-12 through 12, because it does show that he can have a sweeter side too especially when he was trying to do something right. And those are some of the reasons why Duncan is my number one most favorite narrow gauge engine in the Thomas franchise. Now tell me in the comments section on which of these is your favorite. Do you like them all, or do you have your own personal preference? And hopefully, I won't have to redo another list like this ever again. This is Trevor Davis, signing off.